Hi, my name is Elizabeth Ailey and I am a classical feng shui consultant. Um, it is a 4,000 year old art and science. The ancient Chinese masters, they observed the elemental energy interactions on planet Earth. They looked also to the celestial movement of the stars and they took this metaphysical data and gave us equations, they codified it for us, so that we can read energy in the home. We can see where the energy is moving each year, which is what I'm going to be going over in this video. I'll be going over the new flying star energy for 2021. So it begins on February 4th, 2021, and it's based on the Chinese solar calendar. So a lot of people are familiar with Chinese New Year. Um, that actually starts on a different date. The Chinese are using the lunar calendar to come up with that date, which changes every year. And in feng shui, we actually use the solar calendar. So this information has really powerful implications for your everyday life. It's really simple to use. So let's go over what you need in order to apply this to your own space. Well, it's really simple. The only thing that you need in order to apply these annual energy numbers to your own home is the direction of magnetic north in your space. Um, so you can use, of course, a handy compass to find magnetic north. A lot of phones actually have a uh, compass app already included. The only thing that you need to make sure is that you are getting a magnetic north reading as opposed to a true north reading. So true north never changes. It's just a fixed point. But magnetic north has something called declination. Um, it's constantly moving. So this earth energy is moving each year. It's really constantly moving. Um, so if you're not sure if your compass app is giving you a magnetic north reading, one of the places you can go, if you're based in the United States, is to go to the NOAA website. It's a government website that does the calculation for magnetic north for you. So really simple, um, just find out where magnetic north is and then we will go over the um, energy reading for 2021 and you can apply this information in your own home. So thank you for being here. I'm really excited to go over this with you. So here is the Bagua or the Pagua map. Um, you'll notice that it is a gridded system that's divided into nine different sections. So each one of these zones or guas as they're known um, represent different areas of your life. So you look at the north for example, it's a career and life path or you look at the southwest that relates to a relationship or a love zone. Um, so we use this Bagua as kind of a road map so that you can read the layout of your home and see how it connects to the energy in your life. Okay, so some of you might actually already be acquainted with the Bagua map and you might be looking at this and kind of scratching your heads like, wait a minute, this is different than what I'm used to. Um, well, feng shui it was actually popularized in the West by something called BTB feng shui or black hat. Um, that actually was started in the 1980s in the West. So that uses a Bagua map that is generic for any space. So it doesn't take in the different degrees of north, south, east, and west. And since we're using classical or traditional feng shui, we are using the actual degrees. Okay, so imagine that your apartment or your home um, or your room fit into this Bagua square. Uh, I know not everyone's home is a perfect square. There might be missing sections or even an extension um, on the house that takes you outside of the Bagua, and that's okay. Just do your best, um, you know, find out, you know, where is your front door or where does the main energy enter into the space? And 
um, take a look at what these different zones are in your home so that you can apply this information. Um, here is an example just so you have an idea of how you can do this for your own space. So each home has its own personal flying star data. Um, it's unique to your own space. It's kind of like a, a birth chart, an astrological birth chart. Um, so it takes into account when your house was built, uh, you know, when was the roof actually put on top and when was the celestial information from the stars kind of locked into position. Um, the personalized feng shui or flying star chart is going to have two permanent numbers that are in each one of these guas, each one of these zones. The annual flying star information we're going to be going over um, changes every year. So we will be going over all of that flying star annual information um, and you'll be able to apply this to your own space. I am going to go over all of the major malefic or unfavorable energy in the flying star chart for 2021. So there are good numbers that are coming in, of course. It's like yin and yang, you know? There's always kind of this, this blending of energy in the space. So when you look at this report in detail, I don't want you to think that it's only just negative things. Um, but the reason I'm going over the major um, unfavorable numbers is that we can easily remedy this um, in any space regardless of what your personal or unique numbers are. I wouldn't go and tell you how to enhance um, any of the positive information coming in uh, this year because we don't know what your personal um, flying star numbers are and I wouldn't want to you know negate anything positive that's happening in your space or you just don't want to kind of use this flying star energy blindly. Um, but the general information that I'm going to be going over here, so blocking out any of that negative energy or just mischievous energy, is definitely something that you can apply and you can feel really comfortable doing that. So I just wanted to give you a note on that. Um, so let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at the top two unfavorable energies coming in. I'm going to go over these two flying stars first, and then I will go over how to remedy them um, because you will remedy them in the exact same way. Okay, so the first one we have is the yellow five earth star, and it is coming into the southeast direction of your home. So southeast, is wealth and prosperity. Um, number five is actually the most unfavorable number. I know this that 2020 has been a hard year for people, so I know you don't wanna hear that you have a bad star coming into that zone. Um, but again, please know that we can negate this information, this energy really easily. Um, so the number five is considered unfavorable or the most unfavorable number because it doesn't have a feng shui trigram. And what does that mean? Well, it means it's unpredictable. It means we're not sure what this energy will be bringing into the space. Um, and that, and the ancients looked at that as really negative. Um, so please know where that zone is in your home so we can go ahead and remedy that in just a minute. Uh, the next zone I wanna go over is uh, the north. And that is your career and life path we have the second most unfavorable, it's a little bit better than number five, um, but we have the second earth star. Uh, it's a two black star and it brings with it um, potential gossip and slander and litigation. And again, that's coming into your career and life path. Um, so both of these zones are you know, already seem to be rather really tied together um, because, you know, a lot of people's careers is directly impacting their wealth and prosperity. Um, so let's talk about how we can remedy this in your home. So the ancient feng shui masters would say, if you have the luxury of shutting that door or that pantry or whatever this zone is in your home, do that and do not disturb the energy for anything that is five and two. 
Um, you know, a lot of us, that's great, but a lot of us aren't able to do that. Um, so, you know, in these modern times, what I would recommend um, and what other practitioners would recommend too is, you know, don't do any major remodels in this zone. Don't disrupt the energy, right? So like, don't knock down a wall. Um, you know, don't go, well, I think this is a really good time to replace the flooring. Um, you know, of course, if there's some emergency and you have to, you know, fix the plumbing, then you're gonna have to do that. Um, but if it's an elective remodel, I would definitely hold off on these spaces just for 2021. Uh, the next most important thing I wanna say is if your front door is in either of these zones, so the Southeast and the North, you're gonna to wanna to put some protective um, statues or protective omelets, omelets. Um, <laughs> you wanna put some protective medallions out, you know, just make sure that it resonates with you. Uh, you know, traditionally it would be like two protective statues, right? So you could look at like foo dogs or dragons um, that really kind of protect the energy flow because there's a lot of energy coming in a front door. And when you have a five two, you just wanna make sure that you have extra protection there. Um, I personally think that anything, again, that resonates with you like an evil eye or a beautiful Hamsa or you know, like an image of Archangel Michael, you know, God's warrior angel. Um, anything that really resonates with you, uh, I think this is a good place to put it. Even sacred geometry, I think, can be really beautiful. You know, like thinking about um, the seed of life, sacred geometry, or anything that you feel um, grounds and protects that energy. Okay. So the other thing that you're gonna to wanna to know is how to remedy this energy. Well, the number one thing you're gonna do in this space is to ha add heavy metal. So what does that mean, right? So heavy metal. Um, so if in the Southeast, let's say it's your kitchen, for example, well, you have a refrigerator in your kitchen, most likely, and that has a lot of heavy metal in it. Um, so a lot of like large machinery or, you know, electronics like a television or like a treadmill have a lot of heavy metal in them. That's a heavy metal remedy. Um, a safe or a metal filing cabinet, that's a heavy metal remedy. Um, what I recommend for my clients are the kind of uh, little discs that you use if you're using like a bench press. Um, you know, they come in like 5, 10, 15, 45 pounds. And those discs are really helpful because you can really easily, you know, just hide them underneath the cabinet, put them underneath the couch. Nobody has to know that they're there and they're gonna go ahead and remedy that energy. Um, if your space is up to a thousand square feet, you want the um, heavy metal to be at least 30 to 45 pounds, which is quite a lot. Um, so I'd recommend getting, you know, a couple of those like uh, 10 pound discs or or even like kettle balls, for example. Um, I recommend doing them in small weights like that because they're easy to move around. Um, I have made the mistake of buying like a 45 pound weighted disc and it's like, I can barely move this thing. <laughs> so having some kind of small heavy metal and putting them in those zones is really important. Um, if your space is larger than a thousand square feet, you would just wanna go ahead and add 10 pounds for every additional thousand square feet. So if you know if your house is 2,000 square feet, just go ahead and add uh, 10 pounds on top. Okay, so why? Why metal? How does it work? Um, it works to dispel any of the stagnant or sticky energy. Um, acupuncture and feng shui actually are rooted in the same science, the arts and sciences of China. Um, and so if you're familiar with acupuncture, you know that they use needles to really work with the different energy medallions um, or meridians, excuse me, in your body. So feng shui is using metal in a very similar way to kind of move energy along in the space in these different zones of your home. I personally like to think of it as like going to the dentist. Um, 
when you go to the dentist, you know, maybe you'll get some x-rays done, right? And they're gonna bring over like a really heavy leaded vest, right? Or at least they should, right? Because that's going to protect the rest of your body from the radiation or the rays of the x-ray, right? So where the leaded vest is, it blocks it. Well, that's a really similar um, application in feng shui. And a lot of us know today, you know, that you can get um, like metal, uh, you know, blankets that are EMF shielding blankets that have some metal in them, like silver. Um, you can get even grids that go over like your smart meter, again, made of metal, which block out this uh, negative radiation. So those are just some examples, but that is why we recommend metal. Okay, the next stone that we have is the Southwest, which is love and relationship. It's also the woman of the household. It represents the woman. Um, and the energy we have coming into that space is a green three coral wood star. Um, it's not a particularly malefic energy. It could get triggered. Um, by you know permanent flying star information from your home or you know ley lines that are coming from outside um, so if you notice that there is any fighting or quarrels uh, again litigation um, happening in in your love and relationships or to the woman of the household then you're gonna want to go ahead and remedy that energy um, it's a wood element, so again, metal would be a really good way to remedy um, that energy. Another way to remedy it is to add a little bit of red. And since this is a southwest zone, so relationship zone, um, I'd recommend having, you know, maybe like a picture of, uh, a, you know, like two red images, right? Like two things together, since it's relationship, so two together. Um, or, you know, the double happiness in uh, the Chinese um, symbol is really beautiful. That could be something that you pull in. It doesn't have to be a huge amount of red. Um, red energy represents fire, so it goes a long way. You just need a little bit. Um, and also, this is the love and relationship zone. So having, you know, maybe like two um, pink rose quartz crystals would be really great there, right? So it kind of um, has a little bit of that fire energy um, that can, you know, negate that um, quarrelsome energy. And then at the same time, uh, it represents kind of love and having two of them together as kind of a harmonious placement. Okay, the next energy we have is the Northwest, and that is helpful people and travel. It also represents the man of the household. So again, if you identify as a man, um, this is a zone for you. Uh, one of the ways to, oh, it's, so it's a red robbery metal star. Um, and I don't mean to share any of this information to scare you, um, but robbery, uh, violence is actually denoted by this energy. Um, but kind of like the green uh, wood star, it's not as malefic. It just, again, could be triggered by other permanent numbers or something in the space or something else happening, um, you know, outside like a ley line or some kind of energy that we don't see. Because um, again, this is a general information reading. Um, so how do you remedy it? Well, it'd be a really simple way is just to put a light there. Um, just a lamp, make sure it's in good working order. Um, and you know, have it on. Just gonna you know burn up a little bit of that metal energy there. This is not a place we would put a metal remedy because the uh, predominant energy of this star is metal. Um, don't put a salt lamp there, for example. And the reason being that salt, a salt lamps is a red earth energy and it supports the metal. So what I would recommend, other than a lamp, 
is perhaps like an image of water. Um, that's gonna give you about a 50% remedy. Um, so like ocean or a waterfall, something like that. Um, or, you know, even like a little indoor water fountain. I've seen some really beautiful ones and that'd be a great place to put this. Um, so if you notice any of this energy kind of starting to happen, so again, you know, like any kind of violence or things like that, and you know that it's being triggered by something else in the home, and then you can go ahead and remedy that. Okay, the next zone that we have is Northeast, which is knowledge or wisdom. And we have Jupiter coming into that section of your home. Um, it's known as Grand Duke Jupiter in Feng Shui. Um, of course, we know that as the great benefic in Vedic or Western astrology, in Feng Shui, we look at it as the Grand Duke, which basically means you need to give the Duke his due. Um, just imagine if like your dad is hanging out in the northeast section of your home this year. Um, and what do I mean by that? Well, you know, don't remodel in that space. Uh, you know, don't have, sorry, heavy metal music going or, you know, like don't show violent movies or something. I wouldn't recommend that anyway, but like in this zone in particular, it's just a good idea to, uh, you know, keep the energy in this space really calm and quiet. Uh, another thing to know is that if your back is to the northeast zone of your home um, and you're talking with someone, it actually can be really supportive for you. Um, in feng shui, we say like it's like Jupiter's got your back, kind of. Um, and, you know, conversely, if you're having, again, you know, a conversation with somebody or a negotiation, um, it's better if you don't face the northeast direction um, because you're kind of coming up against Jupiter um, and it's giving the other person a little bit of benefit. So perhaps that's helpful for you, but that's something to know. The next information we're gonna go through is um, the last one that I'll be sharing today and it's the three Shahs. Um, considered like the three curses, it's the literal translation is like the three killings. And I don't mean to share this with you to make you feel nervous or scared or anything like that. I just want you to know that it's coming into the east directions of your home. Um, really easy to remedy this energy by, again, having just a little bit of metal. Um, it doesn't need as much as a 5-2, but a little bit of metal in that zone. Um, also kind of the protection that we talked about like an evil eye or you know a statue of um, Mary or any kind of um, anything that resonates with protection for you in these zones would be a good idea if it's a place that you spend a lot of time if it's a place that you don't really go into these rooms or you don't you can say it's a pantry um, or even a bathroom, right? Because the bathroom has a drain, so it's kind of draining that energy down. Um, you should be okay without remedying it, but I did want to mention that those three shahs are coming into this zone for 2021. Okay, so that's the major energy that I recommend that you guys um, remedy. And I wanted to really quickly mention one more thing. Um, Having a wind chime, like a metal wind chime, is actually a really good feng shui cure for a lot of homes or a lot of negative energy. It's um, kind of seen as moving metal, which just enhances you know, kind of that heavy metal energy and it just kind of disperses anything that you don't want in the space. I'm not recommending that in this video. And the reason is that I don't know any of your personal flying star information. Um, wind chimes are great. They really do a good job of uh, dispelling, you know, stagnant energy. I don't personally like having them inside the house. Just as a Western person, it doesn't go with my aesthetic. Um, I think it can be kind of disruptive, like having a wind chime in your, your bedroom, you know, like what's going on? Um, but there's also a practical, traditional reason I don't recommend a wind chime generally here. If you have a 5-2 in your home, which is considered a, um, just 
just a really unfavorable combination. It's the two um, most malefic energies combined together. Again, not trying to scare you, um, but if you have that, uh, you wouldn't want to put a wind chime in that zone, even outside of your house. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, so any of the zones where you have five, two coming in annually, that energy is just there for the annual year, right? But we don't know if you have another, like a, a two perhaps in the southeast where the five is coming in. You wouldn't want to put a wind chime there because of that placement. Having heavy metal in those zones, perfect. It remedies it really nicely. Um, so I just wanted to make a quick note on that because wind chimes are a great way of, um, you know, remedying energy. I just am not recommending it because of this general reading. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. I'm so excited to share this with you guys. I hope that this gives you, um, you know, really good information that you can apply in your home to protect your family, to protect yourself, to make sure that the energy that's brought into your space is at the purest and highest vibration. Um, if you would like to have a remote flying star reading done of your home, Again, I can do that remotely, and um, I just need basic information, like where is your home, um, so I can get the, uh, you know, the magnetic north reading. I can find out where the latitude, longitude is, all of that. I can put the equation together and give you a report so that you can dive even deeper into this home energy and really make sure that you're enhancing the positive and you know, negating any of the negative energy that might be coming from uh, outside or from some permanent numbers or annual numbers in your home. So thank you so much again. I really appreciate you watching and I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you.